welcome back to 30 Days of Lightroom. And in this video, I wanna show you how to create high dynamic range or HDR images in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So what do you need to make these images? HDR is the combination of multiple exposures merged together. So you're gonna need a couple different photos, a minimum of at least two photos, one that looks a little overexposed so you can get the detail in your shadows, and at least one other image that's a little underexposed so we can get the details in our highlights. So we'll have one image where our highlights are properly exposed and our shadows are properly exposed once these are merged together. Now, like I said, you're gonna need at least two images, but you can see here I have four images of varying exposures, and that's because there was such a great tonal distance between my highlights, very bright highlights, and my very dark shadows. So if you have a very contrasty scene, and that's why I picked this mountain range photo, we have a very bright white sky, and we have very dark green trees in the shadows. You're going to need multiple exposures about 1.5 stops apart in order to merge these images together and make it look right. Now this is a lot of experimentation, but again, you're gonna need a minimum of at least two images and usually a maximum of about six. But I definitely recommend experimenting for yourself with different amounts of images and varying exposures. So a lot of people cringe when they hear the word HDR because a lot of people take these images really overboard and really punch their edits. Sometimes you can take images just way too far, add way too much saturation, and really just go overkill. And that's where HDR turns a lot of people off. In this example, I really punched my hues. I brought in a lot of saturation to this image, and I think it looks okay, but some people may think this is over edited. So I also created a little bit more of a subtle example where I just brought out the sunset, which was a nice orange, and there were some nice blue shadows in the mountains, and I made it kind of an orange and teal look a little more subtle than this other edit. So HDR really comes down to how you edit your images and being careful not to over edit them. Let's go ahead and let's merge our four exposures together. I'm gonna to select my first photo and then shift select my last photo so I have these four selected. I'm going to right click, photo merge, HDR, and we will see a preview window pop up and Lightroom is going to create a little preview of our final HDR for us. So here's our preview. I'm going to reset all of these little check boxes and we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about all of them one by one. And each time you click a checkbox or unclick a checkbox, Adobe will rebuild your preview. So just be aware of that. It can get a little time consuming depending on the speed of your computer and how many images you are merging together. The first checkbox that I almost always have on is auto align. We're gonna go ahead and click auto align and that will align our images if we did not happen to use a tripod for our HDR sequence. So you can see that fixed right away some of these issues where the images were not aligning. If you don't have auto align, Lightroom will just merge those images together as they are, even if they don't line up. So 99% of the time I'm gonna use auto align, especially when I'm shooting handheld. Now another option I like to click is auto settings, and that is going to give you a quick preview of what your image is going to look like when it's been processed a little bit. We've brought up some of our shadows, we've brought down some of our highlights, and that is starting to look better. This is a non-destructive process, so this edit is not being baked into our image. We can go back to our basic toning once we've merged our HDR image, and we can change all of those settings. So don't worry, if you hit auto settings, it's just a preview and we can change all of those later. Now let's talk about de-ghost amount. Ghosting is a phenomenon that occurs, especially on windy days. For example, if you have leaves flapping in the wind, maybe you have a person that walks through your photo if you're photographing an HDR image at a touristy location, or maybe even the clouds are moving. You have some options here for removing ghosting. Low de-ghosting will remove little bits and pieces of ghosting. And if you have really heavy ghosting, you have more options for that. Now you can click show de-ghost overlay 
and that will show you if you happen to have any ghosting happening. And that will basically look like a little red mask. And we'll click through here. Yep, we can see there was a little bit of ghosting happening with this tree over here. It was probably waving in the wind just a tiny bit, but don't worry, de-ghosting will completely take care of that. And that way I won't have a duplicate of this one tree over here if it happened to move a little bit between frames. So our settings are looking good so far. The last thing I'm going to click is create stack. And what that's going to do is just combine our files together. We can stack and unstack our images down here in our film strip. It just helps for organization because then you can see when you've already merged photos together. So when our image looks pretty good, I think that looks okay. I'm gonna hit merge and you can see photo merge has been added to tasks and that is going to create a task in the background. And while that is merging, we can go ahead and we can keep editing, but it usually happens fairly quickly. And you can see here, we have our stack created. You can see five images. Let's right click, go to stacking and expand stack. Now you can see our HDR image here, one of five. And we have image two of five, three of five, four of five, and five of five. This is our image sequence that we use to create our HDR image stack. And that looks pretty darn good to start with. Now is when we get to actually begin our editing or our toning of this image. And be sure to watch my video that's dedicated to toning, where we go and we open up this basic tab and we start toning our image. Remember how we clicked that auto settings button? This is basically what it did. It automatically clicked our auto toning button here and did a pretty good job at getting this image started for us. It's by no means finished. I have a lot of work to do on this image to get it the way I want. For example, maybe like this image. But again, watch my basic toning video to learn a little bit more about the toning tab. And you can really tweak this image and make it look the way you want to. For example, I'll typically add a little bit of vibrance, a little bit of color, change my profile to landscape. That adds a little bit of punch and some saturation that looks good maybe add a touch of contrast my sky is looking a little bright maybe i'll turn that down a touch bump up my shadows a bit and this image is feeling very cool so i'm going to bring my white balance up just a hint so that's a pretty good start at editing our hdr photo again you can take this as far as you want to in your edit or you can make very subtle editing choices. But HDR allows you to make a lot more edits to both your shadows and your highlights because you have a lot more tonal range to work with in your images. So that is how you merge multiple exposures into a single frame in Adobe Lightroom Classic. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for all my photography tips, tricks, and hacks. And until next time, get out and go shoot.